In this video, we're going to be demonstrating how to get set up to start training a convolutional neural network, or CNN, in Keras. In previous videos, I explained some basic principles for working with Keras, and now, over the next few videos, we'll be discussing convolutional neural networks in Keras. It's recommended that you go ahead and watch the previous set of Keras videos on my channel before moving forward here, because we will be using some of the principles that we learned in those videos and building on them going forward. So our goal over the next few videos is to build a CNN that can identify whether a given photo is an image of a cat or an image of a dog. And in this video, we'll only be focusing on how to get set up to do that. So we'll be doing all the pre-work and organization of our photos in this video. And then in the following videos, we'll be actually building the architecture of our CNN and begin training with it. So right now I have a bash terminal pulled up here. This is the machine that I'm going to be training on and I've already organized my directory structure. So I'm going to show you how your directory structure needs to be organized and how your images need to be placed on disk in order to train a convolutional neural network on images. So right now I'm within a directory called NBS and within this NBS directory I have a directory titled cats and dogs. So I just CD'd into that. Now within cats and dogs, I've got three directories, test, train, and valid. So the train directory is the directory in which all images of cats and dogs are located that the model will be trained on. The valid directory also has images of cats and dogs, but this will be for our validation set, so what our model is validating on over each epoch. And lastly, our test directory is a directory that has images of cats and dogs that we are going to test our model on by predicting whether or not these images are cats and dogs, and they're not going to be images that were included in this train or valid set. So let's change directory into the train directory and look at what's inside. So we've got within train two directories, one cat, one dog. And if we go into cat, we see that we've got 20 images here. And all of these images I place here, they're all of cats. And we're going to actually see some of the images later on in this video. And if I back out of cat and go into dog, and look in here, this directory contains 20 images only of dogs. Now, if we back out and look at valid directory, it too has the same exact setup, a cat directory and a dog directory within valid. And if we CD into cat, you will see that it is full of images as well. So not as many, it has eight images of cats and then it also has eight images of dogs in its dog folder. And then lastly, if we look in our test folder, it too has the same exact setup. Now I set up my test folder with the categories of cat and dog because I know the labels already and I want to be able to compare our true labels to what the model ends up predicting in a couple videos out. But typically your test data you're not going to have the labels for so you're just going to dump all of your images right here into the root test directory and they're not going to be organized with their respective labels. And I think it would be beneficial to actually see this in a tree structure. So if I run the tree command here from my root cats and dogs directory, we can actually take a look at how the files are organized here visually. So we have a test directory that has cat and dog directories within. The cat directory has images of cats, dog directory has images of dogs. Then we have our train directory that has a cat directory and a dog directory that has the respective images of cats and dogs. And then also we have our valid directory for our validation set that has a cat directory and dog directory with the images of cats and dogs within those respective directories. So now that we see how the photos need to be set up, let's go ahead and take a look at what we need to have in code to be ready to start training. All right, so here's all of the libraries that we're going to use for this entire notebook. And I'm going to use this notebook for the next few videos as well. And then we want to make variables that contain the path to our train, valid, and test directories. So that's what I've done here with the train path, valid path, and test path variables. I've set them equal to the relative path on disk to our train valid and test directories. And recall the cats and dogs directory was in a folder called NBS. And if I look up here, my current notebook that I'm writing in is within that same NBS folder. So these are relative paths. You can give absolute paths as well. And then we're going to create what's called batches for our train valid and test sets. So let's just look at one of these. We're going to set train batches equal to 
image data generator. Now this is a Keras object and an image data generator generates batches of tensor image data and this is the format that the actual images need to be in to be read by the Keras model. So we're going to call image data generator flow from directory and what this is doing is it's taking the path to a directory and generates batches of normalized data. So we're going to pass in our train path because this is for our train batches variable. We're going to pass in our train path that we defined here. Our target size of our images, in my case I'm doing 224 by 224, it's the height and width of the images. And then the classes, so this is our categories that we're classifying into dog or cat in this example. And then our batch size, which is the size of the batches of images that we want to be grabbing and iterating over at once. So I'm setting my batch size equal to 10 for my training set. You also want to do the same exact thing for your validation set and your test set. So here I made variables valid batches and test batches. I'm calling the exact same image data generator flow from directory except for I'm passing my valid path and test path respectively. Same target size because we're dealing with the same type of images, same classes obviously, and then my batch sizes I did change them up a bit because I have different numbers of photos within my target directory so I'm just changing my batch size accordingly to what makes sense for my particular example, but yours will differ depending on what type of data you're working with and how much data you're working with. And then we're not going to focus on this code here. This is just a block of code that I grabbed from GitHub and it just allows me to be able to plot images with their respective labels within my Jupyter Notebook. So it has absolutely nothing to do with deep learning or Keras at all. So you can just copy this so that you can have that functionality as well. I'm about to use it just before we end here. And then I'm creating variables called images and labels here and I am setting them equal to next train batches. So this is going to grab a batch of data from my train batches variable that we created up here. So I have 40 images total in my training set but my batch size is 10. Every time I call next on train batches I'm going to get another batch of size 10 from the total 40 images in my training set. And I'm grabbing those just so that we can plot them here in the notebook so that we can see what we're dealing with. So I'm going to plot this one batch of 10 that I grabbed from my training set. And I see here that we have 10 images. Some are dogs, like the first two. Some are cats. These are all cats right through here. And then dogs, again, these last three. If we reset images and labels to another batch of 10 and plotted this new batch, you can see this is a new batch of cats and dogs that were not included in the first batch. And observe that dogs are labeled as a 1, 0, and cats are labeled as a 0, 1. So that is uniform all the way through all of these images. All the dogs are 1, 0, and cats are 0, 1. And this is what's called an encoding. So now we're set up to actually start working with this data. So we've got all of the images saved on disk to their respective directories. We've got our batches set up. We see what type of data that we're dealing with. In the next video, we're going to start actually building a CNN from scratch. And then we'll be training the CNN on these images of cats and dogs, and then using it to try to predict on images of cats and dogs that it's not seen before. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like the video, subscribe, suggest, and comment. And thanks for watching.